You ever wonder who came up with eggs and bunnies to uh, celebrate Easter? Kind of a contradiction in terms, isn't it? I mean, I guess I could Google who did it, but who wants to work that hard? <laughs> whoa, whoa, all right, oh, we're doing this now, okay. All right. And to be honest, I don't really care who came up with it because there is something just a little bit magical about popping open one of these eggs, am I right? I mean, anything can be in here. A toy, candy, money. And then occasionally, you have the unfortunate luck of finding the empty one. Maybe an empty egg is a better symbol for Easter than a full one. Okay, take the very first Easter morning, all right? Uh, we have hindsight as our benefit, but Jesus' disciples, that they, they were so confused of what was going on, they didn't even have a clue. <laughs> okay, so Mary Magdalene, she gets to the tomb first, and she goes inside, and what does she see? It's empty, she is completely distressed. So she runs to John and Peter, and they go to the tomb, and what do they see? Empty. Empty is a, uh, a negative word, isn't it? My stomach is empty, the gas tank is empty, the house since the kids left, it's empty. Empty just feels like disappointment. And on that very first Easter morning, nobody knew the word empty better than Jesus' followers. They had empty hearts and they had empty hope. In it. I got you, buddy. You see, the thing about Jesus, he takes empty things and he fills them. Empty tombs become resurrected miracles. Empty hearts get filled with love and empty hope overflows with everlasting purpose. Yes, Jesus specializes in empty. Here you go, buddy. Jesus emptied himself for our sake, that we may be filled with love, meant to save the world. I don't know about you, but nowadays, when it seems like we wake up and we are more isolated, alone, empty. But maybe this Easter, between all the eggs and the bunnies and the beans and every other activity, can I ask you a question? Will you allow Jesus to come into your emptiness.